Roger, at the time this happened, am I correct? You were 40 years old when she was 15. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And approximately. And she did see you as a father figure. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So that's a very trusted individual. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Prison Audio. My name is Mike, and in this video, we are taking a look at another parole board hearing. Um, this time, we are in the state of Louisiana, and this is the case of Roger Alley, inmate number 578158. And yeah, this guy is a real, uh, a real piece of work. So in, let's, there's not too much online about this, but I did find, um, a little bit of information about the case online. And basically what it's saying is the defendant, Roger Lynn Alley was charged. Um, so from December, 2007 until April of 2008, he was charged with one count of assaulting a juvenile when the offender has control or supervision over the juvenile and one count of aggravated uh, i don't want to say that word because we're on youtube but you get the idea um yeah so this is another case that's just like blows my mind to look at this stuff when this guy was um you know this happened in 2008 I believe he was sentenced in 2009 and now he is already up for parole. Um, August 29th, 2024, he is up for parole. Um, yeah, I, let's see what, what happens. Let's take a look at the, at the, the parole hearing and see if they grant him parole. Um, I'm hoping not, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. So stick around till the end of the video. I'll come back with some comments and, uh, we'll see you then. My name is Chuck Tillis, chairing today for this committee. My colleagues are Ms. Stapleton and Mr. Prater. Uh, would you give your name and DOC number, please? My name is Roger Alley. My DOC number is 578-158. And the staff, again, please. Stanley Burns. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Rogers. You're a first class offender. Uh, the offense is aggravated incest molestation of a juvenile. Your sentencing was December 10th, 2010. The sentence was 15 years with the Department of Corrections, each count concurrently. Your parole date is 6-14-23. Your good time date is not eligible. Your full term is 9-13-25. Do you have a questionnaire in front of you? No, sir. I'm sorry. Forget that. Okay. Um, I'll be handling your case today. And uh, do you have a statement that you'd like to make before we start? Uh, yes, sir. Um, in 2007, I was addicted to hydrocodone, alcohol, and I smoked the occasional joint. It's not an excuse, it's just a, a, a fact. Um, I, I was, you know, even though my, my inhibitions were down, I still had control of my faculties. I knew, I knew right from wrong. Um, what, what I did was repugnant and, and reprehensible. It, it, five pictures destroyed everything. It destroyed my family, it destroyed my marriage, it destroyed my relationships and it destroyed any trust that I had built. It, it's taken a long time for me to learn to forgive myself. And I can only hope and pray that somehow, some way, she can learn to forgive me as well. Thank you. We have an opposition this morning. Uh, Ms. Nomi DeVille, is she with us? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, you can speak, please. Um, do I speak to you, the court, or do I speak to Roger? All of us are listening. Okay. Um, 
although I um, appreciate, you know, Roger admitting, not admitting, but apologizing, I guess, or maybe some type of remorse for what he did to me. Um, I'm sorry. Take your time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't think that. <laughs> I apologize. Um, I didn't think that it was gonna affect me so many years later. Um, my relationship with my entire family is ruined still. Um, even though Roger was convicted and the evidence was presented, somehow um, he was able to convince my entire family that I was a master manipulator at 15, 16 years old. Um, when really all I needed was someone to protect me, which my mother and Roger failed to do. Roger gained my trust and I eventually looked at him as my father because my own father was fighting his own demons. And as a child, I was desperate for a father and a family. And all I got in return was sexual abuse. And I felt he took my privacy away from me. He took my entire family away from me. I feel severely affected to this day by what he has done to me. He speaks about how he lost everything. It was nothing compared to what you made me lose as a child. And although me attending today and speaking how I feel on this matter, you're still getting, he's still getting out next year, no matter what. And I feel like it's just not justified. <sighs> That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rogers, I'm handling your case. I uh, read your case. Uh, I went through it very thoroughly. I see that you've uh, taken a lot of classes to better yourself. How long have you been incarcerated? 14 years. 14 years. Uh, as you see, it wasn't a good thing, but I'm not here to talk to you about that. Uh, I have no questions, and uh, I'm going to let my colleagues, if they have questions that they want to ask, Ms. Stapleton? Um, yes, sir, I do. First of all, I want to commend Naomi for your bravery to appear today before the board. That's very difficult for any victim to do. And we could see your pain and we could hear your anguish over the childhood you lost. So you have my deepest, um, I don't know. I would say sympathy, but it, that's just not even the right word. Okay, so let me get to Roger. Roger, at the time this happened, am I correct? You were 40 years old and she was 15. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And approximately. And she did see you as a father figure. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So that's a very trusted individual. And, you know, most little girls, if a daddy puts their arms around them, it's because he just adores them. And from what I could read, she had to trade you quid pro quo. If she did something, even in the way of the pictures, um, that's how she would get something from you. Is that the way it worked? Um, like if she wanted to go somewhere or get some money or anything like that, she had to pose for pictures or... She had to do something. Um, no, ma'am, it, 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 it wasn't like that. Um, I, I, I really don't even know what was going through my mind or what, what I'm sorry. Well we, well, we know the pictures got taken. Yes, ma'am. As a child, she was finally able to get somebody to believe her. And, um, Thank goodness for that, because from what I could read, she, she tried it another 
time and nobody did believe her, but she finally did. And she was able to give police the um, information as to where to be able to find them on the internet. So that proved that what she was saying was true. Am I correct when I say that? Yes, ma'am. Yes. And so that is how they came up with the fact that um, you got the charges. Your original charge was aggravated incest, sexual battery, and pornography of a juvenile. Is that correct? Um, I, I don't original know. Charge. You don't know. I got you. But then it was played down to aggravated incest and molestation of a juvenile, of which you got 15 years for each one of those crimes, but they run concurrent. So actually you're serving just 15 years. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, okay, that's all that I have. I think that uh, uh, right now I read that there is extreme opposition from the district attorney and the sheriff uh, for any earlier release, but even an early release, you're going to get out next year anyway. But that is what they had to say about the situation. All right, I'll turn it over to my colleague, uh, board member, Mr. Prater, if he has anything he'd like to say. No questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, is the board prepared to vote? I am. Uh, since I handled your case, uh, Mr. Rogers, I'm going to vote first. I mean, I think I read your case several times, and uh, I, I congratulate you on the classes and the stuff that you're taking, which I think is good. I see that you have you have remorse, and that's good. And you're trying to reform yourself. My vote today is to re, uh, deny. Ms. Uh, Stapleton. My vote today is to deny also. I did see the classes and maybe it just didn't show up, but I didn't see that you took any sex offender class. Am I correct or wrong about that? Did you take uh, anything, a sex offender class? I've never been in a place that, that offered it. Ah, uh, that, that does happen. Okay, I just, I forgot to ask that question. So yes, my vote today is to deny. Mr. Prater? Uh, my vote is to deny also, and with the recommendation, if at all possible, that DOC find a place that he can go to for a long-term uh, sexual abuse uh, classes uh, before his release. His release is going to be next year anyway, so let's try to get that done, if at all possible, for the Board of, I mean, the uh, Department of Corrections. Thank you. Deny. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Your case has been denied. Uh, your parole has been denied, and I wish you luck. This concludes Thanks. this case. We're signing off. Thank you. At uh, 951. You go ahead. All right, guys, that's it. So parole is denied. Um, looks like in the case of Roger Lynn Alley, um, the state of Louisiana has made the right decision. Um, but it's just crazy to think they... He said um, he's getting out next year anyways, which is like, like I said, yeah, I, I have, I say this all the time on here, but I, I have so many friends that are doing such a long period of time for um, charges that aren't as serious as these charges. And so it's just crazy how, how some people, some people get sentenced to a long, long time for drugs and, you know, other people do horrible, horrible things like this and they, you know, they're, they're out. So. It's crazy, but like I said, let me know what you think in the comments, and um, we'll see you in the next one.